hello YouTube, hello everyone. Uh, I'm joined today uh, by Simon Fisher Becker, aka uh, Dorian Maldavar, Mald uh, Mald and um, from Doctor Who. So you may recognise him; he's just less blue than you might you might think. And um, his fee today is a meter's worth oh, of Jaffa cakes. My lordy! <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it a fee, but it's something I can eat. <laughs> Actually, Jaffa cakes very good. They're one of my favourites, or they used to be, until the dietitian told me to keep clear. But um, it's Christmas, and of course, we all know at Christmas and any other holiday and your birthday, there's no calories. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of Christmas. Yeah. So, oh, that's cool. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. And do you have a story about the medallion around your neck? Oh yes, um, um, uh, for those, uh, some people might know, I went to, went down under. I've been to Australia uh -huh. and to uh, New Zealand and um, uh, some Facebook friends uh, in New Zealand, uh, uh, Patty, Kiana and Sandy, they presented me with this medal and if people want to know more about this medal, <laughs> they have to go to Facebook and check out Doctor Who 50th Anniversary um, Virtual Fun Run. <laughs> oh, and it will tell you how you get this medal. But uh, anyway, thank you, Patty and Sandy and Kiana. Woo. I'll be sure to put a link yeah. in the description. And um, are, are you ready to be interviewed? Uh, I'm never ready to be interviewed. So <laughs> just, just fire away. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Don't uh, ask anything if you're not prepared for the answer. Yeah. Good advice. <laughs> Right, okay. Uh, did a love for Doctor Who factor in your uh, decision? Um, so hang on. Well, oh God, I can't read my own handwriting. Is that in your? Does that? What does that say? In, I think it's your uh, your something of a career in show. So did Doctor Who sort of inspire you to pursue a career? Uh, did it inspire me? I, I as a child, I I mean I've watched Doctor Who more or less since the beginning, mm. uh, uh, and uh, yes, I did enjoy Doctor Who. I I was beaten up many a time because of my 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 love of Doctor Who because of course well, Doctor mm -hmm. Who in my day when I was yeah. that tool was uh, not but I always wanted to play the master oh right um, uh, did it influence me uh, no because I didn't seriously think of becoming a professional actor originally uh, when I was mm -hmm. at school I was going to be a biology and music teacher oh, but, okay. but life moves in mysterious ways Ah, interesting combination, biology and music. Oh, uh, well, uh, I was good at both. <laughs> it, was oh, the, okay. it was the only two things I could do quite naturally. Everything else I had to work hard at, you see. So, right. Okay. And I found at uh, Aberdeen there was a degree for people who wanted to be teachers. Mm. Uh, and oh, it was okay. it was an art and ology, you see. Oh, you oh see, I see. see. And, right. so, yeah. so, and the thinking process was... Because even way back then, we're talking 30 or 40 years ago, the arts were always sliced when it came to cutting and things. So I thought, well, if they get rid of a music teacher, they would still want a biology teacher. But life did its wibbly-wobbly thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I ended up here. Wow. <laughs> um, as uh, the man who has uh, played Doria Maldivar and also the Fat Friar, what would you say are the major differences between Doctor Who and Harry Potter fans and fandoms? Uh, there's no difference. Oh, a fan's a fan. A fan's a fan. Uh, well, uh, um, this is from my perspective. Okay. A fan's a fan. Uh, and uh, uh, I would say the Harry Potter ones seem a little more excited and giggly. Right. Okay. Uh, whereas um, whereas uh, Doctor Who fans, um, their lexicon is more awesome. Right, yeah. okay. Uh, whereas Doctor Who fans are... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, so, but Doctor Who fans are awesome. You know, so okay, that's that's the only difference. But fans yeah. are fans and they're absolutely delightful. Oh. I love them all. <laughs> so, and after all, without them, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, upon being... Oh dear, why well, I wrote this on the bus. And I, you mean you didn't prepare the day before? I'd find I'd get more inspired when I yeah. have a bit of... <laughs> okay. Um, ah, hang on. It's upon being recognised, what's the funniest or even strangest thing that someone has ever said to you? Well, um, being recognised is actually something more recent. I mean, initially, nobody would recognise me, wouldn't they? Because, mm. after all, I've got hair and I'm not blue. Yeah. Uh, but what I have noticed more recently, people seem to recognise my voice. 
Right. And yes. quite often the petrol station for some reason. Right. People come out, excuse me, have we met? And, you know, at first I thought it was a chat up line. Right. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and I really didn't know how to respond to it at all. But it's by voice that people hear. Yes. But now, as I've got more and done uh, more things that the fans have seen me in. Yeah. For example, I've done Getting On and I've done Afterlife. So of the course, fans yeah. want to search. So they got a better idea where I look. So yeah. the only time I'm really recognised is by fans. Okay. Uh, anybody else in the streets who wouldn't know me at all. Yeah. I'm absolutely. still in the very fortunate stage that I can go around the supermarket unmolested. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's fine. But when, when I go to a convention, for example, mm. it takes me 40 minutes to get from the lift to the restaurant. Yes, of course. Because everybody goes, oh, hello. So, which is absolutely marvellous. I don't want it to stop. So, yeah, but so the, the voice thing I definitely understand because mm. when uh, we were first on the phone, it was like getting a it phone was, call. It was clearly, me. yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I've had a couple of people phone, mm. and on my phone it comes up as number unknown. You say, you know, the buddy else is here. Mm. And, um, and, they go, and I just say, hello, Simon here. And very often there's a phrase like, ah, yes, I now know it is you. Right. Okay. And who the hell are you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. Ah. Right. This could be tricky. Will Dorian be on our screens at Christmas to see off Matt Smith, or are you not allowed to answer that? Spoilers. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I can say. Will will Alex Kingston mind you stealing her catchphrase? (laughs) (laughs) Well. That's to be seen. <laughs> um, uh, do you prefer? Oh dear. Ah, yes. Do you prefer having a body, or is it more fun to be a head in a box? Uh, the, the, the whole idea of the head in a box was hysterical. <laughs> uh, doing it was a little more uncomfortable than I thought it might be. Uh, oh, so, right. so the idea of doing it continuously as a head in a box, on a personal basis, just for comfort. I'd be a bit, hmm. but no, we sort of whatever. I'm grateful to be asked to work, so yeah. whatever I need to do, whether whether it's just a head, or, or it's with my body, or it's just my body, they won't. Because I've done, I have done photographic work, where right. they've stuck somebody else, else's head on my body. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not as unusual as you think. Uh, presumably, there is a headless monk with Doyle's body out there. Oh, yeah. Presumably, there is. Yeah. yeah. 